the mix has a groove. And I'm, I'm trying to constantly find it. When I can find it, it's more good. Hey, what's up? This is Rob Kanelski. I'm a mix engineer based in Los Angeles, California. And I'm casting over. I don't want to mess you up. But trust me if you love it too fast. When I start a mix, I want it to be early in the morning. That's the way I like to work. The earlier, the better. The less time to think about things. My brain is still kind of waking up. My ears are the freshest. I try to listen to the reference. Just try to listen down one time. No distractions. Just try to catch the vibe, the energy that's happening in there. And then I just get right to it. Today, we are working on a song called Casanova by an artist named Blake Rose. He is very awesome. Check him out. I have my master fader pretty much set from the beginning. That's my approach. I have the Kramer tape machine that I'm using to add just a little bit of uh, faux analog warmth. And then to get my loudness, I have an L2. I keep it pretty simple. I, I like to have it set up mostly so the reference mix and my starting point are pretty, pretty close. What I'll then do is I'll go to maybe the loudest part of the song and I'll set up a loop. I like to see what's going on there. So I, I'll mix the loudest part of the song first, typically, because then I know I'm good, so I can get it as crazy as there. And then I go backwards and then I start going through the other sections. So typically I'll start off the mix after we have this going on here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to typically solo the drums. Let's just do that real quick and check out what's going on here. There's a pretty good balance here on these drums. To me, I think the kick and the snare are like kind of like the backbone of the song. So I want to just see what's going on there. We have a little filtering, just 25 hertz. I'm cutting out any, any kind of low rumble. It's inaudible stuff, but I think after a while, when you when I approach it like that, I, I like doing a lot of high pass at lower frequencies to just get rid of any kind of noise we don't need. We're not hearing it, it doesn't need to be there. Same thing with the top end here. I'm doing a roll off around 12K. And then I have the SSL channel strip here. I have a small gate action going on here. A little bit of EQ. I'm cutting around 370 hertz, get a little bit of the mud out. Um, and let's do the same thing with the snare. And check that out. Once again, a little slight gating, a little bit of compression to tighten it getting some of the harshness out, some of the top end out, and uh, I also turned it up. So let's listen to the kick and snare balance. Okay, that feels good to me. I feel like it's a rhythm thing. It's something you feel, I can't explain it. Let's check out these hi-hats really quick. I cut off some of the low end here. It doesn't need to be there. Rolled off about 260 hertz. We did a little bit of compression, some gating. I rolled off some low end, rolled off some of the top, didn't need to be there. Scooped out around some of the mid range, it added some energy. It just starts, we gotta make some room for the vocals. Um, we're gonna get to that in a second, but let's just see what we got going on. All the drums now. So I got that going. I wanna now bring in the vocal. So my approach a lot of times is I mix in the groups, like I said earlier, and then I bring in that vocal after the drums and I bring in the vocal and the drums and I see how the song's feeling with just drums and vocal. Let's look at the treatment on the vocal here. Okay, what we're doing now is we're gonna roll off some of the low end on 60 hertz. We don't need it to be there. And I also rolled off some of the top end. Okay, it's super subtle. But trust me, all these subtleties add up to a, a, a sound. And now we have the Puig Child on here. It's gonna squeeze it a little bit. So this is grabbing the peaks, it's kind of like just tightening up a little bit. Kind of adding a little bit of glue to the vocal, thickening it a little bit. And now we have a de-esser. De-esser is just, once again, just keeping the S's slightly in check. It's not too bad, this song. So uh, we'll be subtle with it. Okay, now we're back here to this REQ. And I'm once again rolling off some low end because I think when you when I added some of the compression, sometimes it brings back that low end. Feels 
Feels good to me. So now I have the vocal rider. This is something I use often. The purpose of this for me is just, just catching the, some of the phrases that just get a little low. It just brings them to the forefront a little bit without doing compression, you know, because it's like, it's, it's breathing fine. It's just, this is like a little subtlety here that I also think makes a big difference. Let's see what we got going on. Let's go to the verse. Watch me set this city on fire If they ever let me out of their sight I'll stay till the world goes down If I keep the upper hand And if I could go back I wish somebody said Hey, now I'm casting over I don't want to mess you up But trust me So it's doing a lot for the verses and the chorus is kind of leaving it there. Now, this is my particular settings here are pretty subtle. We're doing about a total of like 1.5 dB of range. It's really only grabbing at the low spots. And then I'm making up my gain actually at the end of this. So this is my end volume control here. I typically don't use the fader too much for like leveling. I'm usually using the plugin. So let's let's check it out. Doctor, doctor, tell me what's right Cause I've been up and down every corridor twice Trying to make it out with this merry-go-round that never ends Cool. All right. Jumping to the chorus now. Let's see what it sounds like. Hey, now I'm casting over I don't want to mess you up But trust me if you love it too fast She won't ever love you back Sounds good to me. I, I like how the vocal and the drums are in pocket with each other so i like to mix a song like that I'll, I'll maybe i'll treat it like it's just a drum and vocal and how does that mix sound sound when i like the way it sounds then i'm going to go into adding another instrument let's let's bring in the bass now and see how the bass drums and vocals feel here we go and I'm casting over. I don't wanna okay i'm taking the vocal out i want to hear just the drums and bass how they're dancing The bass feels a little dull to me, so I know here I added a little mid-range, around 700. I'm boosting it quite a bit. Let's, let's engage this and see what's going on. I'm going to turn the compressor off, listen to what the EQ is doing. It's adding a little bit of that string noise. It's not really that noticeable. This is bad for TV. Okay, let's see what the compression is doing. So this groove to me feels good, so let's bring the vocal in. The way I'm looking at it now is just the rhythmic relationship of the instruments. Like, is the bass and the kick vibing well? Are they, like, complementing each other? The snare and the vocal, are they competing? I typically like them almost in the same place, but sometimes it's easy for the snare to get in front of the vocal. I think right now we're kind of in a sweet spot. Vocal, snare, kick, and bass all dancing together. Let's bring in some of these mid-range instruments and see how they're doing, because now this is when we start competing with the vocal. We're going to check it out. Okay. We'll bring in guitar chug. Let's see what it's actually doing. This is a dense production, so I'm gonna really compress this acoustic just to fit it in. It easily gets swallowed up. It's kind of given a more of a rhythmic drive here. So we have it compressed pretty aggressively. I roll off some of the low end. We brought out some of the top and then we cut out some of the low mids. Let's see how that feels with the bass and the drums. Cool, sounds good. All right, let's move on. Let's check out this here. This is an electric main. Same thing here. We're gonna compress it a little more. We wanted to cut through. Uh, we're gonna scoop out things we don't need, around 70 and below. We're boosting around 1.5 two times so I can get to cut through. I want to get that, that string pluck sound cut through the rest of the mix. Once again, it's a pretty dense production. Let's hear it all together. We have a pretty good core of the song happening. Vocals feeling good. The guitar is not in the way. I'm going to start bringing in these harmonies and stuff and just see how everything is fitting. I 
have the REQ and I'm cutting around 120 and then also around 800. It's already sounding pretty good. Let's check it out. Cool. All right. Let's go back to this bridge. We have some synth action. All right, let's solo all the synths here. I'm going to take, take everything out and just listen to synths. So Blake's using these synths to really just add this like layer of color to everything. I didn't do anything to it in this mix. It sounds so great, Blake. You're a genius. Let's, uh, let's bring that in with the drums. Just check it. It, to me, mixing is all about relations, like between the different parts. So I just need to see how everything is vibing. That's kind of how I look at it. Okay, nothing is getting in the way of anything. It's feeling good. Let's bring the bass, and then we'll start bringing in other instruments as we go. So yeah, I forgot. There's another bass here. It's driving a little more. I'm using the L1 limiter to tighten it. And then I have a little bit of EQ here. I'm cutting some super subs and then some of the low mid. And then we have some compression here too. It's feeling good. Let's bring in these uh, other guitars. This particular mix, I'm treating the, all the guitars as a group. So I have the SSL channel strip on that, tightening things, overall broad sweeps, the mid range, you can see here, it's a pretty wide cue. We're just kind of like bringing some brightness. And then for me, it's like, I want to take the part of the instrument that's giving you the tone for that instrument, the sweet spot. And then I'm going to probably turn that up in a broad sweep. And then I'm going to turn the overall instrument down. So bring attention to the instrument but it's not boosting all the unnecessary frequencies that I don't need. So then when I do that, I can turn it down. It opens up more space for the rest of the instruments. It's still cutting through. You can hear it jump right into the mix when I, when I engage that plugin. All EQ and compression is doing that. This is a pop song, right? So we need this vocal to be like clear and there and present. And um, I think it's doing that. I mean, we're, we're, we're trying to like, this particular song has a lot of instruments going on, a lot of, you know, a lot of drums and all that, but we're, we're just kind of making space so that vocal sits, but I don't want to like lose the quality of the other instruments. So we're getting, now there's some life, I feel like we've brought to it. There's more clarity, it's more open, it's definitely a little louder, but it's just, I feel like we've pulled like a, maybe a blanket off of it, you know? it's Now it's kind of breathing, it's feeling good. I, I really like it, it's in your face. Okay, here's before. Here's just the raw vocal with the music. Now it comes with the rest of the vocals here. A lot of subtleties. There's a lot of like little add, little things he added here and there. Let's check out these bridge vocals here really quick. That's cool. Okay, so I have SSL on here. There's some compression, some EQ. Let's, I'm gonna hit play and then I'll engage it. So we're tightening it a little bit. We're adding a little bit, a little glue, a little bit of mid range to just have it poke through. Once again, this is the dense part and it's just kind of adding this energy to it. Let's listen with everything in. That's with everything in. I'm going to take the SSL out and play it without it. This is before I engage the SSL. We have good relationships here. This is this is a mix of good relationships. This is uh, things are all working together. Good. Let's uh, let's check our master here. We're in the loud part of the song. Let's make it louder so the mastering engineer hates us. Hold on. Sound 
pretty good. So when I when I finish this mix, I'll send this version of mastering. But then I'll also send another version. I, I typically label it less limiting. And what I'll do is I'll back off on the threshold a little bit and I'll back off on the output gain a little bit. So I'll send mastering two versions. Because the client a lot of times is going to like my, you know, faux mastered version. So they need, mastering needs to hear that. Sometimes they wind up using it. Sometimes they use the less limited and they try to beat my master. It just really depends on the mastering engineer. But I like giving them options. We have a lot going on here. The song, we, we have a lot of compression. It's feeling nice and glued. One of the final touches I like to do is I like to add a little bit of master fader automation to give some movement. If sometimes we're hitting compressors hard, it's easy to get a brick wall of just like the verses get loud and the choruses kind of feel small. So I'm doing that a little bit here. So let's just see how this transition. We're gonna check to make sure the choruses feel like they become choruses. I wish somebody said Sounds good. Let's turn it off and see what it sounds like going into it. This is no master fader automation. I wish somebody said, hey, now casting over. I don't want to mess you up. Okay, let's put it back on. I wish somebody said, hey, now casting over. I don't want to mess you up. Once again, subtle moves. Tons of subtle moves really give you something. People ask sometimes, I know a lot of people start now, they ask, like, how do you start? How do you, what do you do? How do you, you know, people will be like, I don't know what to do with this EQ. I don't know how to use compression. And me neither, man. I just, <laughs> I mean, I'm, it's a constant learning thing for me from the, from, from the beginning, you know, to now. I'm, I'm, there's some days I'm fumbling around. You know, there's some days I don't think. Sometimes I just do it. You know, I think you need, what I would tell people is use your ears, listen. The approach today is not get in the way, not to try to like force me into this mix. The, the job is to help Blake get to where he's trying to go. He's given us good directions. He's laid it out already. So we're trying to bring some life. We're trying to bring some clarity. We're trying to bring some energy. These are the things that I'm trying to do on this particular mix. This is the part of the, I'm supposed to wrap it up, but I'm not really sure how to wrap it up. This is when I turn to my assistant and I go, you think it's done? And he's like, yeah, it sounds done. And then we print it and send it to the client. Mm -hmm.